the world's first moving automobile assembly line, began Model T production in 1913 at Ford's Highland Park, Michigan plant. In 1914, Ford began Model T production in Chicago. Today, Ford's Chicago assembly plant features the newest flexible machine tooling and lean manufacturing strategies. They combine to deliver the most sophisticated automobile assembly plant in the world. Chicago Assembly produces three new vehicles off one platform and the total plant is capable of building eight models on two platforms. A new supplier manufacturing campus was built adjacent to the plant which is the industry's largest and most comprehensive. It houses 12 key suppliers providing optimal conditions for lean manufacturing and just-in-time inventory. The innovative new 155-acre Chicago Manufacturing Campus is home to Tier 1 and Tier 2 suppliers that provide 60% of the plant's inventory with just-in-time deliveries. As a result, the average distance for a given part to the assembly line has been reduced from 425 miles to 125 miles. Ford saves because its component inventories are reduced, as are its freight costs. Chicago Assembly Plant opened in 1924. The massive new plant on the city's south side first produced Model T's. Since then, the plant has produced millions of vehicles. The Ford 500, its mechanical twin, the Mercury Montego, and the Ford Freestyle were the first three vehicles produced at Chicago using the new flexible system. The project also resulted in significant environmental improvements with the restoration of six acres of wetlands polluted with the slag that had been dumped by nearby steel plants. The Chicago Manufacturing Campus was developed with the help of state government infrastructure improvements and city government employee training. Upgrades and new installations within Chicago Assembly Plant allow the plant to quickly change over and build different models off two architectures. This flexibility enables the plant to better meet changing customer demands. It also promises long-term savings, improves quality through increased standardization, and minimizes product changeover time. Model changeovers that once took months can be accomplished in days, resulting in substantial cost savings. In our assembly plants, when we'd start building a model, a new model, a totally different model, uh, we would require in the past up to eight months to introduce that model and build it through all the pre-production stages up until job one, up until full production of that model. Um, it, depending on how big the changeover was, it was a completely new platform. We would essentially have to shut the assembly plant down for eight months as we go through all those pre-production builds. Stop assembly of the old model down for eight months as we go through the different build phases of the new model going to what we call job one. Um, what the flexible assembly plan allows us to do is put the tooling in on the new model at the same time we're building the old model. Essentially we, we use pallet systems. We could shift the pallet in or out or we could do offline. We could build that pallet, modify that pallet while we're continuing to run the current one. So essentially the tooling, the robot sees a pallet coming down for the old model the next model in line could be the new model. And so change over time, in theory, is reduced to zero. Uh, in reality, you have to bring all the material in, the material flow, and uh, it'll, it'll take two to three weeks. But even that significant reduction from the time it used to take us eight months. Flexibility in the body shop is the most important component of flexible manufacturing because of the complexity of the operation. Ford's new flexible body shop system costs less than both traditional body shops and other flexible systems. The body shop employs an industry-first system of standardized cells or modules, all built from
from fewer than 300 components. More than 80% of the tools and facilities are reused. That has a tremendous impact on cutting costs and reducing downtime during product changeover. Robots can be quickly reprogrammed for model changeovers with Programmable Logic Controllers, or PLCs. New geometric workstations, or geostations, like this welding turntable, are capable of producing parts for multiple vehicles at the same time. They can be easily retooled for model changeovers. Geostations accurately position parts, enabling tight tolerances. The other uh, big advantages are that when in the future when we go to relaunch, we won't be relaunching all the robots, all the PLCs, all the everything. What we'll basically be relaunching is uh, new tooling, okay? Primarily uh, in the what we call the geo stations or the geometric stations. We'll, we'll just for the most part be launching uh, uh, tooling and there would be obviously some technical upgrades to the, to the rest of the lines, but that would be minor. The key enabler for flexible manufacturing is having common vehicle architectures. Vehicles go together the same way, with shared program engineering and shared components. So Ford is returning to its successful philosophy of standardization to streamline the product and the manufacturing processes in the renovation of this historic plant. This plant's been around since 1924, and uh, it's a very old plant. It doesn't look so old now as uh, we've spent quite a bit of money, uh, with not only with facilities and tooling, but creating an environment that we'd be proud to have our, our family work in, as it were. This is more than just automation. This is a totally new material flow, the biggest supplier park in North America, the first one for Ford to go into, uh, certainly of this size and this complexity. Um, our whole material flow system, the fact that we no longer have any rail delivery, everything's truck. Um, there are a lot of uh, uh, business philosophies, if you like, that have all come together, uh, lean manufacturing, if you like has all come together to deliver all in one uh, hit here at Chicago and it's, uh, let's say it's fast paced, very exciting time. There was a huge commitment of capital, planning, manpower and execution. So top management needed a strategy to maximize their chances for success. I think it's incredibly important. In fact, I'd say the most important thing to launching a motor car is the investment up front. Um, everyone needs to put their best people on the advanced part of the program and I say best people I mean experienced people who are good at what they do it's not just a matter of being smart it's a matter of having the experience to understand what's happened in the past and what's the best way to, to make it work in the future um, those people need to be heard by their management including in the plants so the plant managers got to be involved three years before job one that you can't wait until six months before job one and suddenly get passionate about the product, it's too late. The closer you get to job one, the first full production line run, the harder it is to make changes. The product, the facility, the tooling, the entire launch is at least 90% cast in stone six months before job one, at least. What you're really doing is you're tuning what you've got. To begin the renovation and changeover, Chicago Assembly ceased production of the Ford Taurus and Mercury Sable, which it had been building since 1985 to install its new flexible system. Basically in our shop what we did was we stripped out small sections of the shop, uh, relocated some facilities and tooling to create space for some of the facilities to start with, and then when we finally ran out of Taurus there was a major um, demolition project, took about four days to completely demolish everything there and then make good the, uh, uh, the hard stand and then they started relocating the facilities and tooling into here. All the facilities and tooling was first built and tried out, proven out completely as a full, uh, full cells at the suppliers before they came here and my people were there with them as they did that. The plant's body shop underwent a 100,000 square foot expansion and introduced important technological advances. Inline coordinate measuring machines were added for real-time data collection. These machines inspect, 
and record quality data on all critical body dimensions as the units move through the assembly process. These machines examine bodies at a rate of one per hour versus three units per day with the traditional inspection method. Here is the rough layout of the new body shop. At the first station, partial body sides are loaded on the geostation turntable. Meanwhile, at an adjacent station, corresponding inner quarter panels are being loaded. A barcode numbering system keeps them in sequence for the body side marriage at the next station. Those body sides are approximately 120 to 140 jobs away from the next step, the sealer station. It goes from there to the pre-clamp area, also known as clamp up, where the body side is married with the floor pan. From there, it goes to two framers to be welded. After that, it goes on to a roofing station, laser weld and respot area. You see, the way this is done is uh, each of the, the core lines has got a geometric station, which determines it apart from another platform, for example. If I was running two platforms, I'd have two geometric stations next to each other. If I'm running one platform, as I am now, and I'm, and I'm putting in a replacement model, I would put the new platform into that empty station so that I can be putting that in place while I'm running my old model and therefore not only minimize the cost uh, of putting in a whole new body shop, but also um, minimize uh, the time. Here is a closer look at the body shop. In the body shop, the vehicle body and parts stop at each station. Later in the assembly process, the motion is more continuous. Body parts from the nearby Chicago stamping plant arrive on racks for assembly stations. The rear quarter panel follows a typical sequence of steps. Operators first fit the pieces in place, then the carriers and robots move it to welding stations. In the body side building, body sides go through sub-assembly using a VersaWeld system which is a sophisticated lift and overhead transfer system. The operator uses an ergonomic assist hoist to move the inner quarter panels into place. Geometric turntable stations are used to set up parts and then spin them into position for the robotic welders. At this station, the process differs for the freestyle and two sedan models. This geostation sets the taillight area for both the sedan and the freestyle station wagon. The turntable can be set up to handle a different model part on each of the four sides. At this station, the body side receives more welds before a robot hangs them vertically on a rack. Previously, the plant had used horizontal carriers. Vertical hanging saves precious space and makes room for other parts. Next is the manual sealer station. Again, the parts are set in place and the turntable spins the part into position for welding. Part inventories are replenished before the containers empty. Most cells generally have a two hour supply of parts. In the pre-clamp area, Body sides are applied by operators to both freestyles and sedans using ergonomic assists. They enable one operator to apply each body side instead of two. The major components are held together with metal tabs. The headers, or roof mates, are then tabbed in place before the vehicle moves down the line to the framing station. In framing, Vehicles receive general tact welds or initial welds. Now the vehicle is framed. Final inspections focus on fits and finishes, such as door to fender and hood gaps, and all of the vehicle systems inside the car. The vehicles are even put on rollers for tests of the engine, brakes, and acceleration. 
Flexible manufacturing, introduced at Ford Chicago Assembly Plant, resulted in substantial new efficiencies and huge cost savings. But it is the ability to react quickly to market changes that is the most important innovation. Ford's first auto assembly line was revolutionary. Today, a combination of standardization, flexibility, and lean manufacturing is enabling Ford Chicago Assembly Plant to make another major step forward in the evolution of automotive manufacturing.